on the computer. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology. Nice to see you back. And today is a mega carnival astrology. Big get together is there. We have Vanita Ji with us, and we have Fernando, and we have Lars. Yes, we have somehow gathered a slot where we could all meet. And today we are going to play a game where we are going to see. Oh my God! I will not tell the rules. Fernando will tell. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome all of you to Exotic Astrology. Nice to have you. And uh, this is the first time I'm meeting Fernando and Lars. So we were just uh, briefly chatting before this, and it was amazing to have both of you and Vanita Ji also. And all of them, uh, they have, uh, they also do consultations, and they both also have a YouTube channel. Also, I mean, uh, irrespective, I mean, they have their own separate channels. And I'll pin the channels in the description section of this video so if you want to know what videos they have then you can please go there and have a look and now over to fernando for the rules of the game hey nice to see you Abhijit. nice to see you lars nice to see you anita thank you for having us here in exotic astrology it's very nice to be here it's the first time i'm here so uh basically what we're gonna do is that we are gonna play the astrology game okay and the idea is um, we are going to let people know that astrology is a language and that you can uh, use this language to uh, describe and express uh, different uh, pictures or different things you see in the world, which is what an astrologer does when he reads a chart, right? So I'm going to share my screen here. So I have no music, but here we go. <laughs> yeah, I keep I keep hearing like cheesy '80s game show music. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. I can hear it. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna do the music, but yeah, I didn't have something to play on. I'm a great musician. <laughs> but this is the astrology game, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. So let's start. What is the astrology game? How does it work? Don't worry, we're gonna figure that out. So I'm here. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> First of all, <laughs> number one, a picture will be shown. I will show you a picture. Everybody will see it. Uh, it's a simple picture. And uh, afterwards, the astrologers must choose any type of astrological significators to explain the picture shown. Uh, grahas, rashis, uh, bhavas, trishtis, yogas, tiknities, whatever you want to use. The idea is that you have to use an astrological significator, a karka, whatever you want to use to describe that picture. Just the same way that a person who reads music, you know, plays the notes, a person who reads braille, uh, reads what it says by touching it, or a person who reads any type of uh, a book in any language. So afterwards, after 15 seconds of I've showing the picture to you guys, uh, the astrologers uh, will first show his or her pairing, only one pairing per picture. What does that mean? When I show you a picture, you got to choose one uh, significator. For example, you can't use, like if I show you an old person, you can't say um, Saturn and then you say 12 house. No, you got to choose one or the other, okay? Just one, okay? And then proceed to explain astrologically his or her pairing one by one. So I show you a picture. 15 seconds, you choose whatever you want, and then we go one by one. Vanita, and Lars, and Babajit, and then we, ch we change the order. Yes, sir, you have a can, question. Yeah, can I say Saturn in the 12th house? Or of no? course you can say oh, that. Oh, yes. okay, okay, yes, I see yes. what you mean, I see what yeah. you mean. If you wanna, if you wanna add, I mean, if you wanna say Saturn in the 12th house with the aspect of Mars, you know. Right, that, okay. Yeah, you can Great. go there, man. Great. Any, anybody can go there, okay? And afterwards, there are no wrong answers and there are no right answers. You know, as long as you say what you think it is, you go with your first impulse and you obviously have gone through the works of learning astrology and knowing what karkas are, what the planets are, what the signs are, and what the houses are. You know, it's going to be very simple to really uh, describe the pictures. And at the same time, our viewers will understand uh, how the astrological language works, right? And... Most importantly, astrologers must have fun. So, 
Uh, are we ready, guys? <laughs> ready, Ravan, ready. I have, one, I have one question here. Yes, uh, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So we, you will show us the photo and we will relate it to astrology, right? Regarding the pairing, what did you say? Can you just repeat once? Oh, yes. I will show you the picture one by one. It's seven pictures. We're going we're gonna to go through examples now. And you are going to go one by one saying your pairing and saying why. For okay. example, if, if I show you uh, the picture of an old uh, couple, and you say Saturn, you are going to say, well, Saturn, because Saturn is the car cup okay. of age. Okay, okay. But if it's yeah. a pair of old people, you can also say maybe Venus, because Venus is the car cup of relationships and so on. Okay, so perfect. Forth. Perfect. Okay? okay, so let's start. Ah, yeah, okay, example one. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what we, do we... We three have to speak or only one has to speak? No, all three, all three, one by one. For example, this is the picture of a mother. For example, okay. what would it signify astrologically? Well, I'm seeing red <laughs> because I'm wearing red too. Wearing yeah. <laughs> Which would be? I'm seeing Mars and exactly. there's, uh, there's something white. And so I'm, I'm seeing it's like uh, that Moon-Mars conjunction. As they say, it's a Sushi Mangal Yoga. It's a very powerful yoga for money and for prosperity. Hmm. Well, I am seeing that as of now. What about others? I can see the fourth house also activated. Uh -huh. okay. With the moon, moon, Mars conjunction in the fourth house. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Jupiter, Lars? Um, well, I was definitely also seeing the Chandra Mangala Yoga, like Babajit said. And um, yeah, I think that's that I agree with both of you. I would... I don't really have much to add for this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's it. Yeah, I also, see, uh, I also see that currently Rahu is transiting cancer. <laughs> there you go. There yeah, you go, okay. exactly. Yes. So this is, a, this, is, uh, this is a computer engineering uh, engineer in making. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and oh, and, the four, and cancer is really kind of, uh, house, yeah. which is the house of mother. So yeah, there you go. It's a very simple game. Let, let me show you a second example. Okay. This one is tricky. It's an old computer. What can it <laughs> represent astrologically? Well, oh, go ahead. Rahu, Mercury together. <laughs> Mars also. <clears throat> okay. But why is it Mars? Why is it Rahu? Yeah, Mercury? yeah, yeah, surely. Uh, because Mars also, you know, is uh, the Karka for um, uh, computers, as um, I've seen in the charts, like whenever Mars is strong, Saturn is strong, then it uh, relates to computers and uh, stuff like that. And it's an old one. So I think Saturn is predominant here. It's it's a old uh, piece, I think. No, well, I uh, I would say if you give this example, I would say it would depend on what you're asking. So if you are saying that there's a person who is typing the programming inside, then it can be Rahu Mercury. Or if somebody is opening the screws, nuts, bolts, then it can be Mars, I would say. <laughs> yeah, um, I would say... I'm, I'm, I'm considering everything when I'm seeing this picture. So whatever is flashing in my head, I'm just speaking about it. Because there's no sure. rule as such. <laughs> I, think. I, I would say... Yeah. Um, I would say Mercury Saturn, possibly in Aquarius, um, mostly because wow. Mercury just tends to signify electronic things and it's old and it looks kind of beat up <laughs> and it probably only <laughs> performs like very essential fundamental tasks. You know, you're not going to run um, Kala or Parashra's light on this computer. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's probably that Mercury yeah. Saturn and then the Aquarius piece because uh, Aquarius uh, typically comes up for um, technologies that push things forward. I, I think uh, Steve Jobs had Mercury in Aquarius, for example. So, yeah, I, I'm I would... also seeing uh, Ardha Nakshatra because that is related to electricity. And last month when I was, uh, when Moon was in Ardhar, I was in Allahabad in that, uh, that three rivers where they meet and there's so much current there, my God. Wow. Wow. And I'm also seeing the third house because there's this keyboard where you type. Oh yeah, third house makes sense. Yeah. Yes, yes. And it, it's, uh, I would say also Venus because, I mean, it's an old computer. Yes. Really? <laughs> <laughs> but it was a luxury back yes, 30, it is 35 a years ago. Yes. 
So maybe maybe Venus Saturn in a way, and and in a way, I mean it's old, but this used to cost like three thousand dollars. Oh yeah, okay. years ago or so or oh, something nice. like that. So it's an expensive thing back then. Now it's just okay. retro. So it's like the idea of Venus turning into Saturn in many ways. So yeah, yeah. you're getting it. You're getting it. Let's do a third example, a last example before we start the game. Okay, so we're we're heating. We're 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 slowly starting, but we're kind of getting the game right. Okay. This one is a tricky one. <laughs> this is typical Rahul cancer. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah. I would say I can see something related to the Arudha Lagna, which is the reflection of a house, where mm. the Lord is sitting. From that, you count those many houses because I can see the reflection of this person itself in the helm. I don't know what the, that's the helmet or <laughs> the screen. Sure. Yeah, that's the helmet. Yeah, I. It reminds me of. Um, well, I, I really have to think of the moon, not just because he's on the moon, but because of his visor, for sure. And um, yeah, I, there's some other things I could think of too, but I don't want to say. Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, but basically, like, yeah, I would. I would put it. It's almost like either Rahu moon or Rahu cancer, but in the ninth house, because the ninth house is like long journeys and, you know, going to places where we've never gone before that kind of a thing or pilgrimage. And I think the 12th house also is active here. 12th house. Yeah. Interesting. Why? Why? 12th house because of the long journeys only I meant. Oh, oh journeys, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, and then, uh, Swati Nakshatra is also active because Swati deals with space and doing mm -hmm. something which nobody has ever done, standing out from the crowd, individuality. That although mm -hmm. there can be some controversies, but that's what I see here. Cool. <laughs> Aeronautical aeronautics is active actually, so Swati is active. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. You know, and, and taking into consideration that some people don't don't think this is real because some people say we never got to the moon. I would say also <laughs> a lot of Rahu here because it's the idea of conspiracies and the idea of a very eighth house Rahu, maybe the idea of, of oh, this didn't happen. This is fake. But, you know, that's another topic for another. Time. <laughs> that is why I said in the beginning only Rahu in cancer. Exactly. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The illusion. Yeah. 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 But well, uh, did we understand the game more or less, guys? Yeah. Okay. So, yes. okay, okay. Let's start then. So let's start. So let's go for our first picture. So I'm going to show the picture. I'm going to talk a little bit about it. And then we can start. First, Babaji, then Lars, then Vanita as we've gone. So are you ready? Yes. yes. Okay. That is, that's the enthusiasm I wanted to hear. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. The first picture. And now it works. Here we have a skull, okay? There's a lot of things going on here because it's bone, it's the head, it's a human, but it also kind of is scary, right? So there's a lot of things going on here, guys. So, Babaji, what do you think it is? Well, I, I, I see it is the Ascendant. <laughs> <laughs> And I also see that uh, because this is this is very old, that is why this will be linked to Saturn. And uh, yes, Saturn is also related to the bones, I guess. So that way also it is related to Saturn. And yes, this in some way I feel is related to Sun also because or Sun or Jupiter or Ketu, either ways you can put it because you can say that this actually represents... When you can see the when you see this, I get remembrance of the knowledge of the scriptures because that's what the scriptures say that one day you are going to become this. So <laughs> till the time you have the body in a good state or good shape, you can uh, start cultivating spiritual wisdom so that you can transcend the material nature. So th this is what I remember. Lars. Uh, <clears throat> well, what first comes to mind is definitely Saturn possibly in Capricorn and definitely in the fourth house, because not only is it, um, not only is it the skull or, you know, something that's become devoid of skin and stuff. So it's going back to its most essential foundation. That's why Saturn rules the bones and whatnot, but the fourth house deals with anything that's uh, buried 
And while this isn't necessarily, the, the, you know, I have no evidence to suggest that this skull was buried and then unearthed, it's, it still reminds me of, you know, like, of course, the grave and, um, you know, bones buried below the earth. So, um, so that's a very fourth house thing as well. Um, and, uh, but, you know, yeah, you could also relate it to some other significators because it is the head. It's not the full body and so on. And, so it's it's interesting to think about the other things that yeah we could relate it to like the ascendant like like you said already you know that's the head so and vanita yeah i i feel that uh, i go I, by the what uh, bhabajita and last said i feel that it's uh, saturn in the 8th house and uh, maybe in the 12th house maybe yeah. the ketu in the 12th the end as we say. So this is the end and post end how we look. Yeah. What do we do? It, it can also be the eighth house, like the idea of, of yeah. what's hidden, the occult, which always the, yeah. the skull always represent and, and also the, the sun sometimes also is used yep. to represent the bones. Bones. And obviously mm -hmm. the ascendant. And the head so too. Obvious. Yeah, yeah, and I yes. remember Rahu also because Rahu only has the head. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's oh, Rahu good. only has the head. That's that really was good. the first one, actually, we should have said. But wow. Rahu is an area. Yeah. That's yeah. a good one. Okay, next picture. Sure. Here we have Narendra Modi and <laughs> Donald Trump, oh two world God. leaders, one of India, one of the USA. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things going on here <laughs> from the Indian perspective, from the American's perspective. I mean, there's a lot of things that this picture can represent. Let's start. Let's go the reverse order now. Let's start with Vanita to say okay. what she thinks about this. Picture. <laughs> what can it represent astrologically? First of all, both are Leo Lagna. So I would I can see a lot of Leo in this friendship so i see the 11th house leo maybe and uh, it is like signing or something so we can say it's a contractual thing so third and sixth house are activated and uh, of course um, uh, this is mercury is also uh, here because a lot of mercurial uh, you know image this is a friendly one and uh, I think uh, if I will speak everything, then you won't be able to talk about it. So please, <laughs> Baba Jita and Lars, you please take over. I have so many things going on in the head, but I think I should give you people a take. Go for it, Lars. Go for it. Um, <laughs> God damn it. Uh, well, I guess um, it's like Mars in Libra to me because <laughs> Libra is, you know, and Venus are about diplomacy. And, um, you know, I don't Maybe know. It's just red tie you're seeing, Lance? Are you seeing no, red tie? Par par partly, but, like, it's also, like, the thing is, is, like, Mars in, Mars in Libra is oftentimes, like, a peacemaker type person, actually. Uh, like, the Dalai Lama is a great example. He has that placement. And the uh, they just both, like, I mean, Trump is just extremely Martian. You know, he's got Mars right on the ascending degree. And um, I don't know anything about... Uh, did you say his name's Modi? Yes. Yeah, I, I actually don't know anything about him, but just looking at his face, uh, he has some martial features to me in his face. <laughs> and that that is kind of like Mars people tend to be like on the shorter side and, or they tend to have like a very square, like a very square sort of jaw and um, kind of kind of more rectangular or square head is what I've noticed with Mars heavy people. So like he kind of has some like martial features to him. And um, I don't know, like the doors in the background and the flags on either side also just really reminded me of Libra for some reason. Cause I think, you know, cause of the symbol and it's got like the two scales on either side. And, um, it, but that could also be Gemini too. Like it's very Gemini as well. It's like two pillars. So it could be Mars and Gemini, but it reminds me more of Mars and Libra because it's the diplomacy. Um, the handshake specifically is really the, the, the key thing, I think. And, and it's also interesting that uh, Modi's grabbing Trump's hand with both his hands. Okay. And Trump is only 
halfway committed, but, but it's, it's, you know, I'm not going to comment on this part astrologically, but it's fascinating to see in the picture how Modi is like looking out presumably into the crowd and Trump is like looking at Modi and only shaking his hand with one hand. And, um, they're, they're, they're definitely two fairly different people. I think, you know, their priorities are different. Um, Trump is concerned, probably concerned about what Modi thinks of him. <laughs> and I don't know, maybe Modi is concerned with looking really good on camera. I really don't know much about him. So anyway. Babaji. Yeah. So when, when I see this photo, I remember two things primarily. First is I remember the Uttar Falguni Nakshatra. The first Pada falls in Leo for Uttar Falguni and Uttar Falguni deals with signing contracts, deals, negotiations. And especially in the part of Leo, I think this is, uh, this is quite uh, matching to this description because I think they, they, this is the photo when they've signed some agreement or something like that. And Uttar Falguni also has the has Aryaman related to it. So Aryaman is basically the person who does the background job. Yeah. So, like uh, when Modi goes, there is there are people like Ajit Doval, who is the like who is one of his right hands, who does most of the job in the background. So there there may be many Aryamans in this case from Indian side and from the American side also. And another thing I remember is Jeshtha Nakshatra here, because Jeshtha Nakshatra generally uh, they are concerned with uh, leadership positions, leaders being leaders. And they sometimes tend to show uh, they they sometimes tend to show that which they are not, <laughs> or they don't show what they are internally sometimes. So as we can see that externally, maybe there are so many people clicking photos, and everybody is congratulating them. But maybe internally something else is going on. They are having some plans <laughs> inside. <laughs> These Excellent. are the things I can remember. Excellent. And I mean, I, I, I can also see the idea of, of the sun here, the idea of the kings coming together and, and bringing diplomacy. Of course, two sons in this case, of, of two sons coming together. And when two kings come together, they either fight or they bring diplomacy. And here we can see that diplomacy. So yeah, that, that's pretty, pretty good, guys. I mean, we are nailing it. We are nailing it. Good picture you presented. Thank you. We have still more to go. So yes, now, the third one. We have here <laughs> a child doing karate, or maybe, yeah, I think that's karate, if I'm not mistaken. Four stripes, and she's a brown belt. That's pretty good. No, I think this is taekwondo. Whatever. The point is that here we have a, a kid doing some martial arts. Right, right there with the marshal, I said something that's obviously here, but it's a child, so it's not a grown-up. So we have different things going on here, and it's a girl, obviously. So let's start with Balajit. What do you see here? Well, uh, to be very honest, first thing I'm seeing is Venus here. <laughs> not because she's a girl, which is obvious, but uh, why I'm seeing Venus? Because if you see the uh, Kal Purush, that the Vimshotri Dasha system, the second Mahadasha is always of Venus after Ketu. So it is said that during that time, we learn to value family and we learn our natural traits, what we have, we discover ourselves basically. And that is what defines our conception of what is going to give us happiness in this world. That is why Venus deals with luxury, romance and love and all these things. So if this is something which she's doing at when she's very tender, so this will stay with her lifelong. Because uh, as we know, Venus is uh, Shukracharya. Venus never dies. Right? Whenever Venus dies, it will come back again. So these habits and traits, they are also like that. Now that whenever uh, we get uh, we get some habit, either it is good or bad. They say if it, if it stays for 21 days, then it becomes very deep. And for 66 days, they say it becomes a lifestyle. So I'm very sure this, this uh, would have become her lifestyle if she had been doing this from long time. <laughs> nice. Mr. Lars, Mr. Panaro. Uh, well, I'm just going to stick to good old Mars here. Again. <laughs> um, maybe, um, oh, geez, uh, it, it's very, it's very Mars in the sixth house. 
um, possibly Mars in Capricorn, um, because there's that Saturnic discipline to doing the martial arts. So I would say, yeah, Mars in the sixth in Capricorn. And, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I mean, I'm a person who has uh, a sixth house Mars and I've done a decent amount of martial arts. Um, but I'm not really even basing it off my own chart. I'm basing it off of this idea that Mars in the sixth has something called its joy there in the Hellenistic tradition. And when a planet is in the house that it joys, it's almost like, it's almost like a special form of dignity that it gets where it, it sort of gets to like frolic and play at what it does best. And what Mars does best is, you know, this kind of like disciplined, um, focused activity and action and whatnot that is a harnessing of uh, a diverse set of energies and certainly helps one harness like one's inner fire and inner conflicts too into something really constructive and um, you know character building and whatnot and Mars is also described um, as like an ascetic warrior you know as like a brahmacharya sometimes too um which is you know somebody who abstains from sex and sublimates their sexual energies in service to the divine or in service to something greater and so um yeah and so mainly mars and then the last thing i wanted to say about that too is that uh oh yeah is that mars is uh, martial arts um you know they've got the, they've got mars in their name but martial arts are um basically by and large a type of hatha yoga because the essence of hatha yoga deals with um conflict and strife and so that's why in like traditional um hatha yoga asana you're you know you're doing these um very bizarre positions you're supposed to like really meditate into the tension that you're experiencing as your muscles stretch and as you, you know, um, whatever, do the, do the exercise. So it's the same in martial arts, whether it's, you know, like Taekwondo or Tai Chi, which is, you know, quite a bit different. You're, you're, you're doing a, basically a Hatha yoga and that's a very martial thing to me. So that's my two cents. <laughs> last spoke about yoga, last spoke about Mars. <laughs> uh, it's supposed you, to be one Lars, remember. <laughs> if if you give if you give Lars the chance to speak, I don't think there's anything left with me. Oh my <laughs> god, yeah, I should go last. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, but yes, you uh, I was about to say that this is a lot of yoga yoga posture, you know, there are uh, in the taekwondo also when there are certain uh, positions like this, you know, so a lot of yogic uh, uh, asanas can be uh, related to these things you know so definitely uh, mars of course and i see a little bit of you know why they wear white you know so it's moon so yeah. you learn quickly you learn so quickly whatever you uh, whenever you wear white you are quick at learning things so this has a lot of moon because she's wearing white and uh, the belt is uh, satin so that you stay in that particular uh, form in that particular um, area where you have picked up something to stay for long. So it's black, uh, whatever, black or brown, whatever. It is a lot of satin uh, to do with. That is why the bell's colors are like that. So that the you know, uh, children, uh, they don't leave things in between. So they, you know, it's, it's a long process. So they just take it for a longer period. So this is what I can see. And in the air it is going, the, uh, you know, the, the kind of posture she is in, it's a lot of air, uh, you know, involved. One foot is on the ground and the other in the air. So there's a lot of, um, uh, you know, uh, as uh, last said, Virgo. And I see uh, Gemini also because it's a Mercury uh, uh, predominant also uh, because it's child, it's, uh, it's young. Uh, so it's it's like so many um, Mars, Mercury, Moon, Saturn, they all are involved, and well, Venus, of course. It's just every planet, right? It's just it's just all. I'm also seeing I'm also seeing the fifth house because she's uh, the student of somebody, I guess. And you can mm -hmm. you can also see Jupiter because she must be learning from somebody. So, and creative also, obviously, fifth house, as you said, it's a creative house. So this involves creativity also. Yes, yes, yes.
It's, it's very interesting you mentioned the gi, the uniform, which is white. I've never thought about that, Vanita, about the moon being, because, for example, I have uh, uh, Makara Chandra in Shravan Nakshatra, I dearly, and I would do martial arts, wow. and my gi, which was white, would always get dirty, <laughs> because yeah. it was in the Rashi of Saturn, I guess. Uh, uh, yeah. But it's very it's funny. Good. But it's good. Uh, children, when they get their clothes dirty, it is considered good. It's considered auspicious because it means that you are putting a lot of effort to attain uh, success, to attain, um, uh, you know, the, the form that you're in. You are going to uh, excel in that particular area, whatever, because you're getting dirty. Cool. Another, another thing that people haven't mentioned, like this can also be Mars, in Hastanash Kshatra, uh, uh, which okay. obviously is in Virgo. And when Mars is in Virgo, sometimes it's related to martial arts, as it is when it is in, in Capricorn. Uh, but when Hasta is there and Mars is there, it, it, they always mention that it can be martial arts. Of course, she's not using her hands here, uh, but she's using like uh, her no, feet. No, she's having her face. Yeah. Well, that's there. true. That's true. That's true. You're right. You're right. Yeah, so, I know a Virgo Lagna person who has Mars in it, first house. It's in Hasta. And once the person was telling me that when he was hitting somebody like this, the person just did like this and the force came out and his shoulder got dislocated. Ooh, so oh, right. Bad form, bad form. <laughs> so, interesting, Fernando, but this was a very interesting picture, I must say. Let's go for the next one, okay? All right. So you guys are doing well. No points here, but you're doing well. <laughs> this time, I think we'll give Vanita Ji the chance first. <laughs> of course, let's do it. <laughs> so the next one. Here we have the oh Titanic. Titanic. <laughs> Everybody knows about it. There's so many things here. I mean, the Titanic was the biggest ship built like 100 years ago, but it sank in its maiden voyage. There was also a famous movie about it. I mean, there are a lot of things going on here. So, uh, Vanita, let's start with you. What might this mean? 